September 7, 1919, Louise Bennett is born. She would become the social conscience of many and a vocal and effective proponent of pride in self, language, and culture. I suffer lots and lots of sibrelities, my baby. Sibrelities! That's all like a bad sickness. <laughs> Although Miss Lou has lived away from Jamaica since the 1980s, her contribution to nation building remains etched in the hearts and minds of the Jamaican people through the power and resonance of her work. It was here at the Ward Theatre, through the staging of several pantomimes, that she brought joy to the hearts of many. Carry me a child, carry me a child, you are so enchanting, meek and mild. Carry me a child, carry me a child, never, never change that lovely smile. Miss Lou was special guest at Jamaica's Emancipation and Independence Celebrations in 2003. I had a conversation with her in which we reminisced about her career, romance, life with her late husband, Eric Hoverley, and her legacy to Jamaica. After I arrived, my dear, it was greater than a guest. It was a joy. It was a, I, I, I'm so happy about the whole thing because I never really expected, but well, it's the first time I've ever had that kind of um, welcome. I've had welcome all over the world. <laughs> but child, that was a warm welcome coming from the, the heart. And all that. And the bread. Head full with joy. Oh gosh, I tell you, I was so happy. Which event of the many that you've been special guest at stands out in your mind? All of them. All of them. Well, the first one was coming off the, the plane and seeing that group there. And then all along the way to have the children performing and things like that. That was a, the greatest joy, I think. But every time I went, there was something so good. You know, it was, I'm telling you. The old people, the middle-aged people, the young people, all of us are so happy to have you here. You've been living in Canada from, say, the mid-80s. It's now 2003. 87. Would, 87. Mm -hmm. Would you consider relocating to your island home? Mm -hmm. Well, the word relocate has been bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> the bu the mis um, business of relocating. I moved from the 10th floor to the sixth floor of an apartment, <laughs> a condominium in Toronto. And up to now, I can't find half of my things. It was the hardest move. I said, how could I move now from Toronto to Jamaica? But um, since I've been here, though, and um, so-and-so, you never can tell. One day, one day, <laughs> you never can tell. I think. Um, as I told the Prime Minister, I'd like to come uh, to, to, I mean, if, if, I, if, I, if my age will allow me, <laughs> I would like to come to every year to things like, like the independence and that, that different Of things, course, you know? Air Jamaica has afforded you that oh opportunity. Oh, my dear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They oh, my dear. Because they start their schedule to Canada in 2004, and they have offered you first class tickets to return whenever you mm, so desire. Oh, dear, my child. When you heard that Lifetime. Announcement, yes, lifetime. How did that make you feel? Right in Sotel. Right in Sotel. But, uh, but uh, again, that w it was very, very good. Uh, I wished that it was a little sooner than April next year. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that they would start flying back to Canada? <laughs> I just want to touch on some aspects of your life that I know are significant to you. Now, how different would your life have been had you not met one Eric Coverley? Oh, it would be greatly different. You know, I was rushing all around and all that thing. But my, I tell you something, from the beginning, Eric was all, I call him Rico. So if you hear Mr. Rico, he's the same person I mean. It was, uh, he was always getting me to concerts, coming out that, you know, you, I, you, I told you about the first fee. My fir he paid me my first professional fee on the stage. How many it guineas would that have been? One. <laughs> a guinea for the young folk was, a 21, guinea was shillings. 21 shillings. And my dear, I was able to buy a nice virgin shoes for 15 shillings. And I had six shillings left. How old were you when you got that fee? 
That was about, uh, no, I was about uh, over little over 16, 17 something. And, and what was the engagement at which oh you my had dear. performed? The, the, the professional I, engagement, what, not the uh, engagement for the wedding just yet, but the professional <laughs> engagement. What was that no, when, you were paying the 60, when you were paying the um, guinea? That was a Christmas morning concert. You see, he had been to my um, school to Excelsior. He was the guest of honor, you know, the ch Mr. Chalk Talk, doing all his things. And, and so, and it was a prize giving. And uh, that year, except they had given me a prize for uh, literary, eff uh, outstanding literary efforts. <laughs> a book, the book of Tennyson. So I took the book of Tennyson to Chalk Talk after the um, show and said, Mr. Chalk Talk, could you write something in my book? And he says, very, very unusual talent. Give something another, another. <laughs> and the next, a few days after when I went home from school, my mother told me, said, Chalk Talk Hovely came here and he wants you to go to come to his Christmas morning concert and perform. I said, no, love, that is too big. I too big, man, I can't go to Christmas morning concert. It's a big thing. My mother said, but you want more people to, to listen to, to what you're saying and to what you're writing. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no. Well, my dear Chalk Talk went back four times. And my mother each time told him she's going to try to let me come because she wanted me to really go and, and perform at a regular concert. And the Christmas morning I went. And Chalk Talk took me by the hand and introduced me. You know, I'm going to that, 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 this girl from Excelsior and down to do the girls. And well, I remember half of him said, Father, it's out of nervous. What was the piece that you did that morning? Oh, yeah, I may not even remember no, which okay. one. So that's in the past. <laughs> but you know something? It seems, though, that he was quite persistent, not just to get you to perform, but he seemed to have been carrying straw for you from, from that time. It seems so, but I um, me never did carry no straw. And me didn't allow him to carry no straw. <laughs> he would come to me and say things like, Oh, Louise, you know, you know how I feel about you or something other than I'd say, oh. Talk, talk. I saw who was sitting on, on, on the arm of your chair backstage. <laughs> <laughs> when did you realize that the relationship had changed from a professional business one to a romantic one with oh. Uncle Eric? Well, it, it became very romantic in New York. What were you doing yes. in New York? I, um, I went from BBC to New York because at the time there was a thing coming in called the McCarran Bill, that if you have wanted to go to New York at any time, you'd have to, to go on a quota from Jamaica. And uh, my aunt in America wanted me to come to America. She was a whole teacher, you know, like her too. She said, you, there's a lot to learn in America. So, my dear, when I went and they, they told me that um, <clears throat> I would have to go on the Jamaican quota if, if I wanted to. So, uh, so I said, well, uh, I will have to give BBC notice. But, uh, it, I had three months in which to do this, but the McCarran bill was coming in in three months. So I gave the notice, and I um, went off to New York. And um, we can't tell you all the same thing that were happening in New York. All this but how did Uncle Eric get the idea? Because Vietnam already did it. Oh, I'm telling you, saying that. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, telling me the whole same thing, how it goes. Oh, oh maybe oh. I'll just listen. All right, well, now. So, my dear child, I'm living with my aunt and now and our husband. Now. And... Uh, I, my birthday came on the 7th of September. And I said, you know what? I, if it was my birthday in Jamaica, it would be nicer than this. You know? But Saturday didn't feel too good today, you know. Must have washed out some socks and things. <laughs> and then my, um, the telephone rang. And then I heard this voice asking for Miss Louise Bennett. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, he has this voice. So I said, this is Louise Bennett speaking with that. I am Eric <laughs> I said, Coverley, how are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? You're calling me from Jamaica? No, I'm in New York. We're in New York. I'm in Manhattan. This is a, by, by this time, I'm living in, in Brooklyn. So my, uh, I said, well, you, you're far from where I am, but he says, I want to come and see you. I said, yes, but um, I said, how oh, you got my telephone number? Your mother gave it to me. <laughs> Matchmaker. Yes. So I said, well, all right, I'll tell you what. Let me come to where you are, because um, you, you're not going to find a way. You, you're, you're not driving. You're it's the first time you've been to New York. You see, you went to New York. So I said, oh, so my dear child, I, uh, I said, I can take the day. I, I've been here for, for a few months at that time. 
so much here, we take the book. And they say, and today is my birthday, so I'm glad to, to know that you're here. My dear, we take the tram car, not tram car, subway. <laughs> Well, you must say, all me is for you. I don't think believe you, you remember from <laughs> I just got the last oh, my vestiges dear, of it. Anyhow, took the, um, the train, went down to this place, and the lady with whom he was living, his mother lived in New York, you know, but she lived in Queens, and she said she knew that Eric would want to, that's what he's telling me, he want to live in the town where he could go to theater and this and that. And he was, he was on a vacation, only three months vacation. And so he said, um, so went to the lady, my dear, nice lady, she said, oh, I am so glad, I was so glad when, when Mr. Cody said that, um, that you were coming here because they had been reading uh, some of my writings and listening to that. She had baked a cake. Happy birthday. Oh. And I was so glad and chatty, chatty, chatty. I said, Cody, what I want you to do is to help me with a concert. The church, my church, they had a lovely, um, little theater but it needed you know some things i said i want a would like a nice backdrop and all this and he said but i'd like to do that you know he's good at things like that mm. so he had this and the same thing start <laughs> we eat of the, the cake <laughs> the lady cake <laughs> <laughs> and then, then i said now Kobe, come with me to a rehearsal to see that because i had got quite a few friends together and teaching them folk songs that we're going to do things because I'd written a thing called a day in Jamaica starting with wake up beanie wake up beanie boy wake up beanie soon a morning little bit of beanie but in love him coffee wake up beanie soon a morning a little bit of beanie but in love him dancing wake up beanie soon a morning wake up wake up wake up beanie boy wake up beanie soon a morning Oh, God, see. So then, my dear child, we started with that. And we had also the, and that's where we started to sing under the coconut tree. Hey. Like, hey. And, that's it. and we had all seen it, and we go going to rehearse, and we were built a lovely backdrop for the people. He had a three months, he was on a three months thing. But what happened was um, the United Nations was having a yeah. uh, and so And we had friends there, Keith, who was the best man at our wedding, which we got married soon after that. And um, Keith was, was, was something or another in the United Nations at the time. And so they told him about the, the, um, the, the uh, assembly and they, they hired him for the drawing office to do... Are the United Nations? You know, yes. Oh, really? You know, Rico was, um, was a draftsman, yes. profession, you know, but yes. again, he just liked drawing. So he went, man, so he, he was able to do that. Mm, go on, tell me. No, yeah, no, no, I was about to ask, ask you. To I ask don't you. want to get to the UN just yet because I'm, I'm inquisitive. Mm -hmm. What was the proposal like? We're, like, we're coming to the okay. proposal. All that is part of the okay. proposal. So many of us still in Man Manhattan and I living in Brooklyn. And now we got, had to go to rehearsals and things and then. But the first thing we did, the first time the, 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 the show was put on, Good church, the place pack, and did that, and all the other um, Anglican churches. They had halls, and they, everybody wanted. Now they want to be, want us to come to this. Hill. So we were always going to concerts, and doing you know, we were doing raising funds for the for the, the for churches. the churches too, and um, so then. But Coverley, you know, he is because up to the day, I would say, uh, I wouldn't say his dying day. Up to when he was, uh, he would not. If we, if we are going in a car, in which our car, he would not allow me to go in before he opened the door and I would go in. And so you know me going, me ready for open the door, Louise. Hmm. Oh dear me. So anyhow, he used to <laughs> take the train with me to my aunt in place and then go on the train to my, go back on the train then. and you would go in and say, and then one night when we were coming from some place or other, and we were on a train. Sometimes we were in cars because people would take us sometimes. So. And Cobley says, Louise, do you know that many a night I fall asleep on the train? I was sleeping and they had to wake me to, uh, uh, until I got to the, to the, um, to the terminus. And then I would have to take a train from the terminus back to 
Oh, Louise, it think, I, I, this can't go on. It seemed like I'll have to marry you. <laughs> I said, what is this? This could never be a proposal. <laughs> that is how I wanted. I just wanted to laugh. You think sweet me, is <laughs> Yes, man, it's sweet me for you. Did you accept? <laughs> oh, yeah, I say. But me never said, accept so easily, me laugh. You know, the, that, the beginning, I just said, you know, this could never be a proposal. <laughs> you think that you'd have to marry me because you, you drop asleep on a train. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no, Uncle Kovan, the man, that's good. He said, darling, that's not what I mean. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> time, I am dying to laugh in my heart because I know what, what, the, what the answer was going to be, you yes. know. <laughs> you want me to kneel down on the train? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you don't need to kneel down on the train. It's all right. It's yes. Oh, uh, um, so, my dear. so you got married in 1954. We got married in, in, in New York. What month? In 1954. May. May 54? Yeah. What date in May? The 30th of May. How yeah, should the Jamaican education system, particularly at the primary level, address our bilingual status? Address it? Yes. Yeah, so what do we need to do? But then it's there, but it's there, they have to let people know that it's there. When I say people, everybody, the, the children, the parents, the parents. And then I say let them know that it's bilingual because a lot of people don't believe this. They say you're talking bad talk and you're talking that. But you see, they will tell you me, as my mother said to me, darling, it's not bad talk. It's just like how they will tell you you're here bad. <laughs> you know, or you're called bad. It's not bad, it's just different. And they, we, we, it, you have, um, it's a language, but if you feel to re write in it, right at the time when I started to write in, old friends were, and you sent her to school, and you talked to her, this, this language, and, and this, and that, you know. Oh, my mother said, if she had any trouble to you? She said, darling, if you can write as well as I can sew, you will be a success. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, I had to back it over. Yes. And that, but I do believe that people should, first of all, start respecting the language. When I say start, I believe they've begun. I can feel this now, that, that people understand that this is something that, that came from our forefathers. That's something that we should really think about. For my auntie wrote to say that it bother and it vexes her when she hears anybody has tried for me to make a language as a, um, co co what? what? But when they match up something is what? That is the, not the corruption part. Corruption! Mm -hmm. You will see, you know the word. Corruption of the English language. Yes. She said, why do they not call the English language corruption of the Norman French and the, uh, and the Latin and the Greek, what I'm saying, it is derived from. Yes. You see, but we are not corrupt, we derive too. But we derive from Africa, we derive from, from, from England. And so, again, I want to to say, when it comes cult to culture, because a lot of our language comes from the, the cultural background. So she says, when the Asian culture and the European culture work upon African culture in the Caribbean people, we stir them up and, you know what I mean? Yes. We stir them up. up. And to, 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 we, we stir them up and blend them to a flavor. We shake them up and move them to a beat. We wheel them and we turn them and we rock them and we sound them and we temper them and laugh. Love them them sweet. <laughs> you know, the whole thing, we use the culture and we use the language. And we have a language. Let me now take you to the whole business of theatre because language and your introduction and your legitimizing the Jamaican language in theatre played a very important role in our development. What role do you think theatre can play in our further development as an independent nation? very the part that we have been playing in pantomimes for several years because at the beginning when when, when pantomime started the any dialect that, that was used in, in the pantomime was mostly the english cockney you know lady when, when, when i lived in there was this girl who used to call me lady ride it for me <laughs> the first time she asked me to ride a letter i said ride so uh, i say say ride it and the letter said dear dorothy pg we are longing to see you, GP. We would like to come and look for you, GW. I said, Dorothy, what is this? G GP, B, P, G, and G. Price, God, God, be price and God willing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, the language there, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, I, when I went to Royal Academy, I realized, and they said, the people who have a, a, another language, 
like bilingual like yes. ourselves. See, whether they call it dialect, whatever it is, they get the, 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 the strong parts yes. because they have a, 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 a diff different character to, to play. You play the character according to how you speak and how you, you, you carry. So, so you think theatre and language has a very important role? A, a very important role in the development of Jamaica. In the development. Because you know that when we started, there was a lot of cockney in the... Yes. Uh, 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 the first one was Jack and the Beanstalk, and then Babes in the Wood, that time you never born yet. And then um, they, they had Solid and the Wicked Bird, that was the first Jamaican pantomime. And I did a lot of the folk songs in the, the, the dance. If there's a little known but it's significant fact about Miss Lou that no one knows, mm -hmm. what would it be? If there's something that we don't know but it is important to you? Well, it is what? Because we chat my business on. <laughs> 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 Let me ask you while you think about it, what has been the brightest moment in your life when you reflect on your many years and your various contributions? What has been for you the most significant or one of the most significant moments oh, of your life? Allow. I've had so many, so strong, because I believe that there's a divinity that shapes our ends, our, our lives. I believe that there's something, a power that is, uh, because you, you need something, and you, maybe you don't even know just how. And something uh, wonderful happened. The, uh, uh, I, w I took the, the things to the gleaner. Michael the Caldwell said, oh, well, I do not know. A uh, few uh, uh, months after, you got the call. I, somebody had a, a, a party, asked me to say that, yeah, and that was, I was the first, um, my poem was one of the first things performed on the ZQI, which the is radio station, the first, the first radio, radio station, radio station in and somebody heard that, uh, see if you have any, mm -hmm, yes. and asked me, it was, it was actually those who did the poem, yes. you know, and I was asked to, to, to perform before the people, and I said, uh, and who was in, the, who was one of the guests? But I do not know Michael DeCourtville, who is the managing director. Yes. And the same one who said, I do not know, he said to me, I'd like to uh, see you tomorrow morning. And it ended up with my doing, starting the, to write the, in, in the, in the, Gleaner. the Gleaner on so the Sunday paper, yes. which was the presti prestigious one. Was so you had good things happen to wonderful, you. Wonderful. So what, wonderful. Is your, what is your philosophy on life? My philosophy is... One of them is Tekinti Tibahatban. That I feel that the gift of laughter is a wonderful thing. Because if you can laugh at certain things, if you can find the humor in certain situations, and don't let the, 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 the humor um, hurt the situation, you know? What is it? It has become a thing. This is. And what was the question you asked me? Why I, I will get philosophy, to that. philosophy. Your philosophy. My philosophy, of yes. Life. Another one is um, if you beat fufu, you get bellyful. If you, you work towards. Persistence. Yeah. And you will get, no, not only, you get bellyful. Mm -hmm. You get your desire. Your just reward. Just, and, and, and this thing comes to you because you do what. You feel the, your inspiration. Did you know about the poem the, the, when I wished upon the star I've and the cloud? Yes. You know? Yeah, I don't remember it, but yes, I know of it. I, I was, I was uh, in what did they school at the time. And uh, when you write, you must write in the standard language, you know? And I love to write and tell stories and things. Uh, but I knew all the folk songs and that because my grandmother had taught me some of them. But the image is. This night, I, w I was writing things in, in, Eng in English, in the standard. But then I go to like churches and I would hear, the, I know that English was not a perfect language, because now really it is an intellectual dialect. Yes. I, I, I'm not an intellectual, a universal dialect. Well, you can call it intellectual. As I was to say, it was. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But a universal dialect. All over the world, people are learning English because of that, that, that. And they, they, they speak different, like even in England now you hear them singing, praise him for his grace and fever, it's praise him for his grace yes. and fever, you know. You see the overpronounced. Let me just do this, they've given me one minute to go. Mm -hmm. How do you want Louise Bennett Coverley to be remembered? 
Oh. My darling, love me, little dove, my dumpling, my gizada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, to be remembered as a... Uh, you, you tell me. As because the contribution you've made to the gaining respect for language, the social commentary respect. across social commentary. our nation, across 50 years and more. 60 and more. That's right, 60 and more. What do you see as your, the greatest legacy that you've left this country and Jamaicans, wherever they may be? To respect their language, to respect their people, to uh, have a way that people don't respect a, a certain person because they, they speak differently. They feel, well, you know, and, 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 and yet they themselves, that's why what I proved in these, uh, um, some of the places that I was, the first place that I, where Michael de Cordova was and all these people were, uh, I was reciting and the people were responding to my recitation, you know, my, my verses. So the respect. You see, you see, I say, no, they all, no, he himself no. A lot of those people there who looked and would say that they didn't understand, they, they um, didn't know, they responded, mm hmm. Yes. It was a thing, and they knew and they understood, and it, it was a joy. Miss Lou, thank you so very much. We could sit here and talk for plenty, plenty, time. plenty more time. There's so much to talk because about. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being you. I want to thank you for being politically correct when we didn't even know that term <laughs> of tackling issues and bringing them to the fore so that younger persons and even persons who are your contemporaries could understand what it is that you saw in the Jamaican psyche and in the Jamaican culture that needed to be addressed. And you addressed them with such elegance and eloquence. It's walk good and may good doppy walk with you. And you are good to darling and good will follow you. You know, what good means be good, be kind, be loving, be, you know, be respectful. And I found a lot of that love here. That was a conversation with cultural icon, Dr. The Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley. Till next time, I'm Faye Ellington. Walk good.